what if your romantic relationship with your partner could actually get like exceedingly better if you didn't depend so much on them for things that you could actually just give yourself? There are a lot of people out there that are in relationships where they depend on their partner for things like validation and approval and reassurance. They're actually like they have their sense of self-worth tied to their partner. These are usually the people that had fucked up childhoods and learned anxious attachment styles, right? Instead of secure attachment styles. The anxious attachment style, maybe their emotional needs were not given to them, right? Maybe they were neglected emotionally, right? And that led them to form an anxious attachment style. But the fascinating thing about that is that, quite honestly, that fucks up relationships, in adulthood, specifically romantic relationships with a significant other. And the fascinating thing is that if you were to approach it from a different standpoint, you could honestly be happier and healthier in your relationship. And so I want to dive deep into this and explore this and to really understand what this all means. For myself personally, I've experienced relationships uh, based around these unhealthier dynamics. And the more that I grow, heal, and do the work on myself, the more I'm realizing how cool, like, having healthy boundaries, being individuated and differentiated actually is, and what that means for relationships as they are, right? So there are people out there that are in unhealthy relationships. They depend on their partner for things that they could actually give themselves if they were to become uh, emotionally healthier, right? things like validation and approval and reassurance. I mean, like, I understand why they do it, right? They've tied their sense of self-worth to the person. Oh, I'm only worthy if I have this person. Oh, I need this person because they give me um, reassurance. Reassurance based around what, though? Reassurance based around your identity that you don't really seem to have static. This constant turbulence of ups and downs in regards to how you see yourself. Oh, please tell me I'm good enough. Please tell me I'm good enough. Please tell me I'm worthy. Please validate my existence, this, that, and the other. I'm not here to make fun of anybody. I understand these dynamics. I have nothing but empathy and compassion for people, but I am here to explore the contrast between people that are in healthy, secure relationships and people that are in unhealthy and insecure relationships. And the people that are in unhealthy and insecure relationships, they tend to be the ones that are emotionally unhealthier, right? They don't have a solid static sense of self, which is why they look outside of themselves for people to validate and approve of them, right? That's not healthy. You actually have the capacity to have your sense of self-worth be entirely intrinsic, right? Which means that it's dictated from within, which means you get to choose that. You get to dictate that. Nothing else outside of there, nobody else outside of there gets to dictate that. And I understand that a lot of people might look at what I'm saying and be like, Chris, that's ridiculous. Like that's on the total opposite end of the spectrum. It is. It 100. People that are in <clears throat> unhealthy, insecure relationships exceed unhealth in terms of the dynamic of their own sense of individuality, which it's really corrupted. Um, and they would never attract or be attracted to individuals that are healthier and secure. There are um, relationship dynamics out there based on healthy, secure individuals that are wild. They're, they're, they're incredible. And the dynamic is much more about the intersubjective space, which I will get more into, um, between the two people and focusing on that rather than all of these other things like oh, um, I need to be validated, I need to <clears throat> be told that I'm worthy, I need to be told that I'm good enough, this, that, and the other. The things that a lot of people rely, <clears throat> excuse me, the things that a lot of people rely on their partner for that they could actually give themselves would totally transform their relationship dynamics like day and fucking night, right? Like, say for instance, imagine you rely entirely on your partner for validation and approval and reassurance maybe it's reassurance that you're good enough dude or woman whoever you are you're good enough period it might take you more time to see that and it might be more than just the words that i say that shit is inherent 
something in childhood fucked that out of you and I understand it happens. It's trauma, right? Being in a relationship with somebody solely for the purpose for you to feel worthy is a fucking burden in and of itself. It's a, it's a distraction. It is a, um, I, when, when I, when I say burden, I don't mean that like you're a bad person or that like you shouldn't be doing that. What I mean is that it's a distraction from the potential of like actual healthy and beautiful dynamics, right? Like if you could actually see your own sense of self-worth for yourself as intrinsic for what it is, you wouldn't depend so much on another person to validate and approve of you. And not only that, but if you were to actually see it, you would become exceedingly more attractive, right? So many people have learned that their sense of self-worth is out there. And usually in the case of relationships, it's in the other person. Oh, I'm only worthy if I'm with you, right? Do you understand how much weight that puts on another person? Do you understand how much that strains another person? Now, the thing is, a lot of people don't realize this. A lot of other people that are in relationships with people like that, they were marred and scathed into that. So they are like, doesn't mean it's healthy, but they are a perfect puzzle piece for that scenario, right? Because they're like, oh my God, yes, I get to carry around all of this responsibility of validating and approving and, you know, giving reassurance to this person, just like I've always known, because that was my trauma, right? Some people are actually like a perfect puzzle piece to that. I understand, right? But the relationship is likely to experience massive highs and lows over and over and over again that never really go away. They're just the same fucking patterns over and over and over again. So let me explore anxious attachment versus boundaries, individuation, and differentiation. Anxious attachment is basically when the parent or caregiver did not um, create a secure attachment with the child, right? Uh, they didn't get the healthy boundaries. They didn't get the um, you know validation and approval early on and then taught how to validate and approve of themselves, they were likely neglected, they were likely um, physically abandoned, you know, all these different things um, lead to anxious attachment, right. But the contrast of that, the polar opposite of that is boundaries, individuation, differentiation. Uh, boundaries is important because it helps you uh, develop your own sense of clear static self, right. Um, individuation is becoming your own autonomous organism that is separate from your family of origin through thoughts, feelings, behaviors, opinions, however you choose to see yourself in the world that is separate from everybody else. Differentiation is more so self and other, um, more so boundaries where I begin, where I end, where the other person begins, where the other person ends, right? Um, people that have anxious attachments tend to be more enmeshed with individuals, which is why the whole dynamic of um, tying your sense of self-worth to the external, right, extrinsic to the other person tends to take place because your sense of self and your sense of self-worth is enmeshed with their opinion rather than you just validating and approving of yourself. But you didn't learn that because you were raised with a lack of healthy boundaries. You were raised with an individual or two individuals or however many that um, led your attachment style to be anxious, insecure. You are insecure about your sense of self. You are insecure about your identity, right? And that's what fucks everything up. Um, and that's really the issue there regarding that. Um, so there is a fine difference between individuals that are in relationships where there's an anxious attachment and then individuals that are, you know, that have boundaries, have individuated and have differentiated. That's just the, that's the reality of it, right? Um, and the, the difference between secure individuals and relationships is that there is a sense of healthy independence as well as healthy interdependence. The healthy interdependence does not consist of, you know, constant need for reassurance. Why is the other person reassuring you? As long as they're not making you feel insecure that they're like going to like go behind your back and do something that would violate the boundaries of the relationship that you both agreed on, what do you need reassurance for? Do you need reassurance for your identity? Why are you seeking that from other? That should be something that you would work on and come to fully um, 
construct for yourself, right? Your identity is not something that other people need to give you reassurance on. If that is the case, then therapy is the answer to that. Um, and that's just the way that it is. Um, so yeah, the, the, the fascinating thing about the difference between secure individuals and relationships and insecure uh, individuals and relationships is that secure individuals, they enter relationships with other uh, individuals that are also secure. And what it is that takes place is far different than that of insecure individuals relationships like imagine you're with somebody and like like every every hour they're like am i good enough hey am i good enough am i are you are you sure i'm good enough? i don't i don't think you're telling me the truth i don't i don't believe you am i really good enough okay fine i'll believe you wait i don't believe you anymore am i really good enough am i worthy am i worthy am i worthy am i am i good enough are you sure i'm good enough like that anxious attachment to like the ups and downs over and over again of your sense of identity and how you see yourself. Why are you asking somebody else if you're good enough? I understand why you are, but like seeing it for yourself is important, right? Um, do you actually need to seek that in somebody else? Or can you just give that to yourself because you can actually learn to uh, develop a, a clear static sense of self, right? People that are insecure, they lack a concrete static sense of self, which is why they seek reassurance from other people. Excuse me. So that's just the reality of it. Um, and the other thing that I want to look at here is what is it that occurs in the intersubjective space between self and other? I think that this will be really powerful for a lot of people because I'm going to introduce something here that I think will help out a lot of people. Consider intersubjective space between two people in a relationship like a bubble, right? So two people are inside of the bubble, right? Whatever it is that occurs in that intersubjective space is what it is that makes the relationship. There is such thing as unhealthy uh, fabric of intersubjective space. That usually consists of people that triangulate people with other people or other things, right? Um, triangulation is an unhealthy dynamic in any relationship. Um, but imagine, like, for instance, in the intersubjective space between two people, imagine somebody was like, you know, in that bubble with another person and one of the person, um, one of, maybe say the other person is a bit more secure, but the other person's like really insecure. And they're like, validate me, validate me, validate me, validate me, validate me, approve of me. Am I good enough? I need the reassurance. Please tell me I'm good enough. Please tell me I'm a fucking human. Please tell me I'm good. And like, imagine like the other person is like, wait, why are we focusing on that? I mean, we could be creating more beautiful experiences together. We could be focusing on other material but you're very focused on me validating and approving of you rather than us having conversations about the fucking universe and physics and I don't know, metaphysics and the nature of reality. And I don't know, classical music and all these cool things that we could be talking about, but instead you're this <laughs> broken record on repeat. I don't mean that as a pun. Um, you're this broken record on repeat that is, well, do I mean that as a pun? I don't know, whatever. It doesn't matter. You're this broken record on repeat of validate me, validate me, validate me, validate me, validate me, just over and over and over again. But you're distracting the two of you from healthier, more profound experiences that could take place if you were a more secure individual. I hope you understand what I'm saying here because it's very important to understand this. Um, what it is that takes place between uh, self and other in the intersubjective space is crucially important. It is. If you are an insecure individual, you lack a clear static sense of self, the likelihood that you're going to seek reassurance in another individual is very high. The likelihood that that seeking of that reassurance from the other individual um, is going to distract both of you from a healthier and happier relationship of better experiences is also very high, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? I hope you do because it's very important to see this for what it is. Um, which really brings me to my last question, right? Why are you with your partner? If you are, why are you looking for a partner? If you are, right? Are you looking for them because you don't feel good enough about yourself? Do you actually, if you have in the past and are considering moving forward uh, doing this, why are you seeking a partner to fulfill your own insecurities? Why not just work through your insecurities and then attract a partner that you could have these absolutely 
mind blowing, ethereal experiences with in this beautiful intersubjective space that you both consciously create and is not just based around your insecurities of what it is that you think you need to depend on another person for, right? Insecurity is a real thing. Insecurities fucking up relationships is a real thing. Secure individuals and secure healthy relationships are a real fucking thing. They exist. If you look at the contrast and dynamic between the two, you'll be mind blown at how fucking different they are. Insecure relationships are this fucking confusing, exhausting, um, heavy weight bearing dynamic where all of these different things are happening. And, you know, at some point you might even ask yourself, why the fuck am I here? Why am I in this relationship? Is this what I actually want? Do I want to be dealing with this shit for the rest of my life? Right. And it's fascinating because like when you've been through unhealthy relationships and you start to see the contrast, you start to realize healthy, secure individuals and also healthy, secure relationships like it's 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 kind of like a i don't know like f- first you see a um a uh i don't know a, a piece of shit beat up car driving down the road it doesn't really do anything for anybody and then you see this nice fucking ferrari or lamborghini you know with a nice fucking loud engine and just like sleek nice color and this that and the other it turns a lot of fucking heads you know and that's the reality of it and so it's kind of like similar with like healthy relationships but the, the funny thing is, and this is on the dynamic, or the, this is on the subject of unhealthy, um, healthy relationships don't tend to turn a lot of heads because they're not drama ridden. Drama turns a lot of heads. Things that happen turn a lot of heads. And that's the reality for unhealthy relationships, right? So I'll end off in this note. Just like I said in the beginning, what if you could be happier if you didn't depend on your partner? so much for what it is that you can actually give yourself. And what I mean by that is like I was saying before, your sense of self-worth is intrinsic. You don't have to tie it to another person. You don't have to seek all of this reassurance from another person. And they, you might have even been with a person who was used to that responsibility of giving you reassurance and maybe that gave them meaning. Maybe that gave them meaning and purpose, right? And like that, not being their meaning and purpose anymore. Maybe that like fucks up the relationship dynamic, but like, honestly, like unhealthy relationships that are insecure are unhealthy relationships that are insecure. And if you've never been in a healthy relationship with a healthy and secure individual, you don't know what it is. And believe me when I say that it is like completely fucking different from unhealthy relationships, you don't know what it is, but also you don't know how fucking beautiful it is until you've been in one, until you've actually done the work to like, be like, wow, I can't believe I've given this burden of a weight of reassurance of my own reassurance to another individual. Please validate me and approve of me over and over and over and over again. Like, like, no, like, like, like there's there's no shame in it there's no there's no guilt don't you don't have to feel any of that it's not good or bad or right or wrong but you don't have to do it you don't have to be with somebody because they give you this reassurance nobody needs to reassure you of anything the most important thing that you can do for yourself is to do the work on yourself to realize that you were traumatized just like fucking everybody else on the face of this fucking planet and you can do the work to heal and you can also have exceedingly healthier and quite honestly, far more fun and enticing relationships.